Hello friends, after showing you a lot of these Argentinian flag signs, let me show you my standard technique of performing uh, these two stage rexes for intumescent lenses, uh, which has given wonderful results in majority of our uh, intumescent lenses. This has been my standard practice for uh, the intumescent lenses for the last few years. So after injecting a dispersive OED, I'm filling the anterior chamber under the dispersive OED, the cohesive OED sodium alernate, trying to flatten the anterior capsule a little bit. So after making a 2.8 posterior limbal incision, I again go back and try to uh, the flatten the anterior capsule in the central area uh, where the cortex is there, trying to push it away. So once the puncture is made, there is a small amount of passive decompression happening with the loose fluid cortex coming out. Uh, and I'm making a very small 3 mm rexus here. The idea is the smaller the rexus is much more easier to control. So the next important thing now is to go and decompress this very tense bag here. So I'm just using my bimanual irrigation aspiration cannulas to do the job. I'm just trying to tap on the nucleus so that the, the swollen cortex is freed away from all the capsular fornices and comes into the central area which can then be aspirated. The point to note here is that the anterior capsular margin is also quite thin and fragile. So during these maneuvers, we can tear it off. So care needs to be taken for that. Another important point to note here is we need to remove the, both the anterior subcapsular cortex and also the posterior subcapsular cortex which is behind the nucleus which can be easily got by just tapping on the nucleus. So in this case, we can see the nucleus is uh, freely mobile and the entire bag is devoid of any cortex. Then a tangential cut is given uh, onto the anterior capsulotomy margin and I am performing the secondary rexus aiming to get around 5 mm rexus. At this stage, I realized that the secondary rexis also is not big enough. So I go ahead and enlarge this rexis. Uh, at this stage, it's very easy to control the capsular flap because the capsular bag is totally devoid of any tension. So we can enlarge it in a much more controlled way without the fear of the rexis running away. So I'm just trying to get a the proper shape of the rexus. Once this is done, we proceed to perform the phaco emulsification of the nucleus. So this is a direct chop. I'm using a sharp chopper to perform a vertical chop here. We don't have any epinuclear shell support in this situation. So just I try to lift up the nucleus a little bit when I'm trying to laterally separate so that we don't exert any pressure posteriorly. Again, lateral chopping into chopping and lateral separating into multiple small fragments. So the idea is we don't want to emulsify any of the nucleus until all the chops are performed simply because uh, these all these fragments are important to keep the bag formed. So we want to chop them and keep them in situ until all the chopping is done so that the bag doesn't become floppy. So once we have around five to six fragments, then we start to uh, consume each of these fragments uh, in the pupillary plane. So care is to be taken that uh, we don't have any surge, the chamber is stable. Then most of the job is quite easy here. So you need to understand what are what parameters are ideal for your machine to ensure that the chamber stability is maintained throughout. So if required, you can step down on the parameters as we reach the last fragment just to ensure that we don't catch the posterior capsule. So this is how the case is done. Once it is done, we implant the lens and we have got a reasonably sized rexus in this patient. Thank you so much.